To start this lesson on magnets and the flying paper clip, you're going to need a cup, a craft stick, a magnet, about 12 inches of thread, a paper clip, some tape to share, and a rubber band. And you'll need your scissors and some various items to test. Today, we're going to explore magnets. And magnets is part of physical science. Electromagnetism is one of the big forces that we know of in the universe with gravity and then electromagnetism. And so today, we're going to explore magnets and we're going to make something. Scientists often make an apparatus or a device to test an idea. And that's what we're going to do. You're going to make something that looks like this when you're finished here. And what I have is a cup with a craft stick and a magnet glued to the top. And then I have my paper clip. And if I do this just right, it stays right up in the air like it's a flying paper clip. No magic here, just science. Today we're going to make a flying paper clip using a magnet. All right, so before we get started, magnets come in all shapes and all sizes. And I brought some along today to show you. A magnet could look like a horseshoe. A horseshoe magnet is one right here. And that's the size of something you've probably seen before. Or it could be a small horseshoe. Or it could be in the shape of a bar. Or even round. It can be big or small, or even the shape of a donut. Magnets can come in any shape. And in fact, I have these two right here, and they come together, they click. So a magnet is kind of interesting. They come in any shape or size, and we're going to, the ones we're going to be looking at today, actually are part of a clip that I recycled, and so we have a magnet right here stuck in our plastic clip right here. So let's, before we get started, let's, let's think about a magnet. A magnet has, if we had a bar magnet, a magnet has two ends, and we call those ends a pole. And often the end might be known as a north or south. Or it could be a plus or a minus. And so we have poles. And that is often where the magnet is the strongest. And it could be a plus or a minus. The thing to remember is that they're opposite. If the north is on one end, south is on the other. If plus is one in, on one end, then minus is on the other. Now it's kind of interesting when you see a magnet like this, a horseshoe magnet, it's actually a bar magnet that's been turned around. So the strong part is right there. So we have this magnet that has two ends. See so a magnet, like you see here, with the north and the south, can do something kind of cool. Check this out. A magnet can attract. A magnet can attract. And if you notice, I let go of these, they pull back together. So one thing a magnet can do is attract. A-T-T-R-A-C-T. -T -T. That means they come together. And so I'm going to put this one right here with another magnet stuck to it, just like this. So here's my drawing. Here's my magnets attracting. One thing about magnets, if they attract, they have to be opposite. So if that's a south, that ha this one has to be north. And if that's north, that one has to be south. If that's minus, this one has to be plus. So attracting are opposite. In order for it to attract, they have to be the opposite sides. So what if I take my magnet, and it's still south, right here. And that means this side is north. Okay, and it's still attracting, and I turn it over. And so now, I have a south. If that's south, this has to be north. Let's see what happens when I try to put them together. Ready? Let's see if they'll attract. Hey. Well, 
What's going on? I can't keep them together. When they're the same, they repel. Repel means to push away. Repel means they go away from each other. Attract means they come together. So they repel when they are the same. So I wonder if now they're repelling. What if I turn them both over instead of south-south? Now they're north-north. What are they going to do? They still repel. So what I've learned about magnets is that opposites attract the same repel. All right, so we can do a little magnet quiz. If I had seven magnets together, let's put a bunch of them right here. It's like uh, here's three magnets, and and then I see this magnet is is repelling, and that uh, that one's repelling, and two more over here. Okay, so I have seven magnets. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, and here they're attracting. They're together, attract, attract. Here they're repelling, and thanks for checking this out. Here they're repelling, and here they're uh, repelling, and here they're attracting. If I start with one magnet, if this is north, that has to be south. And since they're repelling, this has to be south. That has to be north. That has to be or attracting south. That has to be north. Attracting south, this has to be north. Going this way, since they're repelling, that has to be north. That has to be south. And that, if that's south and repelling, that has to be south. That has to be north, south, and north. So you can do a little magnet quiz on your own just by if they're attracting or repelling. Now, the reason we use north and south is because the earth is one big magnet. It has poles. We have a North Pole and a South Pole. Now, the actual geographic North is a little bit different than the magnetic North. But the Earth is one big magnet. Today, before we build our apparatus, we're going to do a little more exploring. But let's start making a list. And you might want to uh, write this the same way I am. Okay, so magnets. Here we go. Here's going to be our list. Magnets. Teachers, you can do this on the board. We're going to make a list of things that magnets will attract. Okay? And we're going to make a list of things that magnets will not attract. Like a little T-square right here. Okay? All right, so we know that magnets will attract other magnets. We saw that. And we also know that the Earth is a magnet. So we know two things that they will attract. See magnetism. So I brought along today a, uh, a big donut magnet. <laughs> and I have it in plastic. And I'm going to show you, we're going to add something to this magnet to maybe see the force. So here you see my donut magnet, OK? And I brought along with me something called iron filings. Iron filings are pieces of metal called iron that have been ground up. And so you can see it's like a dust. And this is made of iron, which is a type of metal that's very common on the earth. Now, it doesn't look like this. It comes out of the ground usually as iron ore. And it's processed, crushed, melted, and the iron is pulled out of it. Maybe you heard of iron and vitamins. But iron is a metal. And it reacts. Well, let's just see what it does. Check it out. It is all being attracted to this magnet. In fact, if I push it away, it comes back. Watch this. I'll push it away. And it comes back. So we've learned something that magnets are attracted by iron. So magnets are attracted by iron. So I think I'm going to actually write that down on my list. What magnets are attracted to? Iron. Now the science symbol for iron is a big F and a small e. It stands for ferrous. So we know that magnets are attracted to iron. Along something kind of special here, I have a 
a special magnet, and this magnet is inside of a bottle, and I'm going to take the, uh, it's got a little tube in there, and I'm going to take the magnet out. It's a cylinder magnet. See it right here like this? So here's a magnet, and here's a bunch of iron filings. And they will go back and forth inside of here. And I can, they kind of, you can see how it kind of attaches to the iron filings through the bottle. What happens if I put the magnet in here, put the lid back on, and now the magnet is inside the tube, and I can get, well, this looks kind of cool. Check it out. Wherever I have the magnet in the tube, the iron filings will go. And they kind of stick right there on it. So you can see that the magnetic field is not just straight. It's actually up in the air. It's what we call three-dimensional. So it's up, down, and out. That's kind of cool. There is a magnetic field in a bottle. You know, I said that it's one big magnet, and uh, when I go exploring, like on my, on, on my summer science camp this year, I like to bring this special uh, instrument right here. <laughs> this is my uh, compass hat. Check it out. I have my, my hat here, and it's filled with all kinds of compasses. So you see, a compass is something that attracts a magnet, and uh, I happen to have a compass right here. It points towards the north pole, magnetic pole. The trouble is, if you have another magnet nearby, it's, or more iron nearby, it's going to go and point to the nearest magnet. So hiking, uh, a hat like this might help as long as you keep, <laughs> as long as you keep the uh, magnets away from it. But we can add one more thing to our list. We can add magnets attract a compass. Okay? All right, so there's one more before we get started. There's one more uh, building our, before we get started building our own apparatus. I want to show you one that I've built, and it's right here. Okay, so I have here a wooden frame, and on the wooden frame I have put a magnet, attached a magnet through an iron bolt, and if you can see this, I have my magnet right here, and I have a ping pong ball that has a iron nail in it. And if I do this, wow, look at that. It's almost floating in air. Can you see that? Let me come a little bit closer. Check it out. It's floating in the air, it looks like. I also have a paper clip on a string. I can bring it up and now both of them are. Both of them are, they look like they're <laughs> floating in the air. And they are. They're being attracted to this magnet. And there's a gap in here. You can see the magnet and the gap. And I can test different objects in between here to see if they will cause the ball to fall. First thing I'm going to do to see if magnets are attracted or not attracted, I'm going to try my finger. Watch this. Here you go. Here comes my finger in between the gap, and wow, my finger did not attract to the magnet. Okay, let me try. I have a bunch of objects I'm going to try. Here's a piece of paper. Make a prediction. Is it going to stay up or go down? Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. Here comes the paper. Make your prediction. Stays up. My finger stays up, paper stays up. What about a piece of wood? I have a large piece of wood here. It's pretty thick. Make your prediction. Stay up. Don't know. Go down. Make your prediction. Here we go. Wow, look at that. I'm going to try one more object. I have a piece of glass. So we've tried my finger, paper. Here comes the glass. Thumbs up. It stays. Thumbs down. It'll go down. Here we go. It stays. We better add that to our list. So it will not attract to my finger, paper, wood, or glass. None of those objects made it 
fall down. None of those objects. So I have some plastic. I have some really thick plastic. What's your vote on plastic? Stick? Attract? No attract? Make your prediction? Here we go. Let's find out. Ready? Plastic does not work. So I've tried different objects. I've tried my finger, paper, wood, glass, plastic. I'm going to try some metals because iron is a metal. I bet maybe metals will attract. The first metal I'm going to try is something out of a can, which is aluminum. And I have a thin piece, and I'm going to try the big, thick piece. This is aluminum or aluminum, if you like. And it's metal. Here we go. Thumbs up, down, you don't know. Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, and what? Even with aluminum, it stays? I have a piece of brass. Brass. Same size, it's just thicker. Brass, another metal. I bet it's going to fall on brass. Make your prediction. Thumbs up, you don't know. Here we go. Brass. Oh my goodness. Not even brass. Aluminum, brass, two metals. Uh, copper. I have this a piece of hammered copper I have that I made. It's what pennies are made out of. Let's try copper. Ready? Let's see if this will, this will work. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, oh, make your prediction. Stay up, go down, you don't know. Three, two, one, and not even copper. Not even copper. I have one more piece of metal, and this is a metal. It's kind of dangerous. It's made out of, it's, this is lead. It's an element. It's lead. It's very heavy. It's dangerous because you don't want to get this inside of your body. It could hurt you. Lead is heavy. It's dense. Uh, it blocks x-rays, and if you're a Superman fan, it stops kryptonite from hurting Superman. <laughs> Let's see if, if lead will break our magnetic force. Here we go. No, not even lead. We need to record these results. So, magnets are attracted to a lot of things, but not aluminum. not brass, not copper, and not even lead. And these are all metals. So just because it's a metal doesn't mean that it'll be attracted to it. So <clears throat> what's going on? We know that magnets attract other magnets, the earth and iron and a compass, but they don't attract these. Well, I Here's the cool part about this. There's these invisible lines of magnetic force that you can't see, but we know they're there. I got my scissors right here. I'm going to see if I can cut these using my scissors. Let's see what I'm ready. This is going to be kind of difficult. Let's see if I can cut these. Here we go. Here's my scissors. I'm going to cut those invisible lines and see what happens. Oh, I was able to... Oh, wait a minute, I'm having a little trouble. Oh. Well, as you can see, I, I, I cut the lines, but look what happened. <laughs> I can't get my... The uh, scissors actually uh, stuck to my magnet. What, do I, what in the world is in these scissors? What is in these scissors that uh, um, causes that to happen? Well, I'll tell you. It's no big mystery. These scissors are made of steel. And steel is an alloy of iron. So steel is attracted to a magnet because it has iron in it. So I hope you had a chance to have some fun watching me test a bunch of objects. Now we're going to build our own apparatus, and then you're going to test your objects. So let's get started. You're going to need a... Craft stick, magnet, and a rubber band. And you'll be using the tape in just a moment. So those are the three things you need right now. Go ahead and get those ready. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our craft stick. Here's our magnet. We're going to put it on the back of the magnet. 
So it comes right about like that. Not all the way to the end, but right about like that, okay? And I'm going to take this rubber band and wrap it around maybe five or six times so it's tight on here. It's four, five, six times. So you see where my stick is? It's on the back. There's my magnet. I got to move this down so it's not covering my magnet. Perfect. So step one is to put your stick, your rubber band, your magnet together like that. Okay, so you have this ready. Now we're going to take two pieces of tape, and you might want to make these tapes about, uh, oh, kind of long, about four, about this long, about as long as your finger. And we're going to put two of these pieces of tape. The first one's going to be at the tip here. Put it at the front of the popsicle stick and wrap it around, but don't cover your magnet, okay? Wrap it around tight on the front of your popsicle stick. We're actually making a magnet popsicle, basically. And then we're going to put another piece of tape just like this on the bottom. Two pieces of tape, two pieces of tape, one on the top and one on the bottom, and we will make our magnet popsicle just like this. Okay, so we've made this. And this is on here nice and tight. It's important that this is secure. Rubber band, two pieces of tape. Okay, this is our magnet popsicle. And magnets are dangerous around small children and also around computers and color television. So keep them away from that or you're going to be in big trouble. Next, we have our cup. You have your cup right here. Okay, we're going to attach this to your cup like this. Kind of make a, a diving board kind of a deal. See, uh, I want the magnet on going down though. The magnet goes down. I'm going to need two long pieces of tape for that. Okay, here's my first long piece. I'm going to put it right here like this. And I'm, I'm going to put it on the front. Put it here. Two points. It's good if this is on the front. Now this still will wobble like that, so we need to put one on the front and one on the back. Here's my second one on the back. And now we've made our magnet on our cup. Tie your paper clip to your piece of thread that you see right here. So we have the paper clip tied to a piece of thread. And you'll need one small piece of tape ready. So let me give you a chance to get these items ready. We have our cup and our magnet. We have our paper clip with a piece of thread and a small piece of tape. All right, so the, the, what we're going to do is we're going to attach these together, trying to make a gap right here. And the best way to do this is to turn this upside down like that, and you'll notice that the paper clip sticks to it. Can you see that right there? The paper clip is sticking to it. And if I pull it away, it goes back. So we're going to try to attach this. Now, here's, if I pull it back a little bit like this, you can see it's just like that. Check it out. See that? I pull it back. So what we want to do is pull this, put the extra string inside of the cup, and we want to pull gently, have your tape ready, and you want to pull gently to pull this down, about like that. See there's a gap in there? And then tape it with your other hand. See how I put my tape right there? Now you're going to find that some people are really good at this, if you get this done, there's my gap, help someone else. And there we have my flying paper clip. You can see that it's just like the one I made earlier. It has a magnet and a string, and there's a little gap right there that you can test different things with. 
kind of cool. One more thing before I let you finish your investigation. I'm going to draw a picture of it and have it laying down right by the picture. So what I'd like you to do is to, when you're finished, to draw this, label it, write a report about it, and test your objects. And if you do all that, then I'd like you to keep that and all the extra supplies. So here we go. Here's my cup. And then I have my popsicle stick coming out. Here's my magnet. And my paper clip, which is floating in the air, right here. So, I have a cup, I have a magnet, and I have an iron or steel paper clip. And that is our flying paper clip apparatus. There's the drawing, and here is the real thing right next to it. Enjoy your investigation. To learn more about magnets and magnetism, you can check out indianaexpeditions.org. Season one, we did a show called Physical Science, where we explored magnets in factories and in hospitals and around your school. I'll see you next time.